Hi, I'm Charlie Hutton and I'm an international Grand Prix dressage rider and trainer um, and I'm here today working with Petplan Equine and your horse. I'm hopefully here to inspire you guys to get out there, go competing and um, have the confidence and the belief in yourself that you can do it. We have a rider entering the arena doing prelim 19. First impressions are everything. And what stands out for me is that the horse is in a nice rhythm and a nice balance. And the rider and horse combination look like a good match. So that for me is a really good start. Um, you can see they're fairly straight down the center line. You don't need to do a halt in prelim 19. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, and we're looking here at rhythm and balance. So from the judge's point of view, at prelim level, the picture needs to be nice. Obviously, the lines need to be accurate and the exercises need to be performed correctly. So you can see she's done her circle and now she's going to change the rein. And when you're looking at the scales of training, obviously you start with rhythm, suppleness, contact, impulsion, straightness and collection. And that's how the test is being judged on. So the judge is there not to criticize you, but to assess your way of going in comparison to the rest of the class. And what we're looking at here for her second circle is that again, the shape and the size, but also to take into account, is the horse the same on both sides? So you can see that actually the balance on the left circle was slightly better than the balance on the right circle. So that will get taken into account too. Transition into walk was fairly fluent and the horse is thinking fairly forward and what we're looking at here is the regularity of the walk so is the walk four beat yes so one two three four one two three four one two three four so that mark there i would be inclined to give a seven four some might go lower some might go higher but i think that that's fairly good at this level and then you can see the difference going into the extended walk the horse is stretching the horse is seeking the bit the horse could have a little bit more ground cover and you can see that occasionally the horse needs to be a little bit more what we call on the rider's aids. So making sure that the horse is responsive to the smallest aids possible. And that's something that will need to be taken into consideration a little bit through the training. Um, and here coming back from the walk to the trot needs a little bit more impulsion again into the circle. And then that manifests into the transition. You can see there's a little bit of loss of balance but she went into canter, she's forward, she's on it, and she's ready to go. And you can see, again, if we're looking at the overall picture, the picture is consistent. That's the thing that I love about this combination is that really the balance doesn't alter, the frame's not ducking and diving, it's consistent uphill tendencies, the pole is mostly the highest point, and the nose is on the vertical, and the horse is thinking forward, and that's really the most important bit. As long as the horse is thinking forward, the rest can take care of itself. And she's fairly accurate too. So I'd be looking at this test overall thinking, actually, she's doing a really good job here. Yes, there are some takeaways that she could be thinking as a rider point of view, the horse needs to be a little bit more on my aids and needs to be a bit more responsive so I can keep my aids a little bit stiller. But actually, I'd be really, really pleased with this test. The lines are good. The balance is good. The fluency is good. It's just having the confidence to be able to ride in such a way that you put all of your training at home and to be able to produce that into a test. So I think she's doing a really good job. And again, you can see there in the downward transition, nice and fluent. She doesn't rely on the hand for the downward transition. She allows him to stay working over the back. And that then is highlighted in the stretching because again, she allows the horse to stretch and he follows the bit, follows the hand. Yes, there's a little bit of loss of attention there, but again, that just comes from the horse staying in front of the leg enough and, and stepping through from behind. And you can see again, that for me, that stretching trot gives you so much information about the way of going for the horse. So when you gather up the reins, there was a little moment of resistance, which again, just needs to be a little bit more through from, from the leg and a little bit more responsive, but a lovely balanced halt. And it's just taken a little bit more time there. It would have got a really, really solid mark for a, a decent halt.
So there we just saw Claire riding through her prelim 19 and she's done a phenomenal job. And I think she should be really, really proud of herself there. And just moving forwards as a, from a training point of view, the horse could be a little bit more sensitive. So the aids can be a little bit stiller. So in order to uh, develop your horse's responsiveness so that the horse is more sensitive and refined to the rider's aids, you really have to know your horse's natural reactions and, and know your horse well. So have a conversation with your regular coach um, and discuss how you can um, develop more sensitivity, but just trust trust your instincts and, and be brave enough to try using a smaller aid. Now, obviously, when you use a smaller aid, um, you might get some miscommunication through that trial and trial and error period. So um, don't worry if mistakes start to happen because that's just part of the training process. What I always try and imagine with transitions is they are indicators of what your balance is like within the pace that you were once in. So for example, if you are in trot and you're going into canter and perhaps the canter transition comes a little bit hollow, that is an indicator that the horse wasn't using his back. So a couple of exercises that you can do to help mitigate those problems are to play with transitions within the pace. Bear in mind a horse carries two thirds of their body weight on their forehand and one third on the hindquarters. So it's about making sure that the horse balances not only himself but also the weight of the rider more evenly into the center of gravity and the other exercise i would do is do more counting within stride so that can be doing a walk trot transition and making sure you're doing eight strides of walk or four strides of walk so often when we're riding it's actually really hard to concentrate and our mind starts to wander so counting is a really great way to focus your mind and that's something just two simple things that might be able to help you in your training at home. Um, I hope that that will give you guys some uh, inspiration, motivation to be brave, be bold and actually own it and go out and enjoy the process of competing because so often the, the idea of competing is more being judged by others and do it for you. Go out there, do it for your reasons, for you, the love of your horse, your partnership, and I wish you all the best. Good luck. <laughs>